we beat a very good Florida State team. Um, you know, Leonard has done a tremendous job with their program. And, you know, one of the challenges with our guys was that I wanted to make sure that we didn't play their record and we played the team. Uh, when you look at them, they're way better than their record. But obviously, um, November, December with uh, Miller being out 16 games and, and obviously the injuries, um, they, they had some losses. Um, but we played well tonight. You know, I told our guys, other than I thought the last five minutes of the first half, I thought we did a great job. It was one of those great defensive nights. Um, and then we just happened to make shots coming into the game. We wanted to do a good job of defending the three-point line. When you look at, you know, their last couple games against Clemson, um, they made 13 free throw, made th 13 three-pointers, and at Pitt 10, and you know, won the game at Pitt and very well could have won it, uh, won the game versus Clemson. So, uh, proud of our guys. Um, quick turnaround, and we got to get ready for a game on Saturday. So, questions? Seems like you're especially uh, miffed with Turquavion towards the end of that. I think he sat on the final. Couple minutes. Uh, what were you seeing from him that uh, sort of prompted that? And what was your message to him at halftime? No, I, I coached him. Yeah. Not, I mean, listen, he, that that kid's been with me, and you know he trusts me, and uh, I praise him, but I coached him. I wasn't miffed at him. I don't know what that is, but I was, I was, I coached him. He, I didn't like a couple of things he did, and you know um, he allowed me to coach him and jump on him, and he responded in the second half. Did you have scripted the first 10, 15 minutes better? I called it that way, Chip. I knew it was that. I called it that way. No, I did. No, we. We played well. I mean, we we played well, and um, you know we you know I thought we shared the basketball. I thought we came out aggressive. I thought defensively, where we we were sharp and we understood scouting reports and you know getting off to a good start. Our defense kind of you know uh, anchored and led us into some easy baskets. When Darren Gant uh, hits a three, is that when you kind of know that maybe things are going right? I can't believe that you're challenging whether uh, Greg Gant can shoot a three or not. No, he, 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 listen, it's crazy because he's worked on that shot for the last two weeks. And, you know, coaches worked on, like, you're going to get that shot. And I wanted him to take it. I was hoping he didn't pass it up. And I think it was all net. So I don't know if, I don't know if it was one of those nights because he made a three. We were playing well. I think he's put a lot of work into it. It's tough to coach with a 30 point lead, and how do, how do you, how, is it hard to play with a 30 point lead? How do you, how do you coach that? It's a lot easier to play up 30 than down 30, I can tell you that. Um, it's tough, you know, keeping guys focused and everything else. And, you know, like I said, we, we, we played well tonight. And, you know, this is, a, like I told you before, Leonard has been the um, golden standard about, you know, playing 10 guys, really good size and all that. We just, we played really, really well tonight. I know you're a one game at a time, not looking too ahead, but big picture wise, best start in, in decade or so in ACC, and best start in almost 20 years, also through 23 games. If you would have told yourself last year at the end of the season, right now you guys would be here. I can't believe you just brought up last year. <laughs> no, I. It's it's hard to say in this league. I mean, you look, you can be you can be really good, and you can have a losing record in this league. And so, you know, I would be lying to you if I knew where we would be at right now. Uh, but I will say we did a great job, I thought, in the off season addressing a lot of the issues that we had. And we, you know, and we improved in a lot of areas. And these guys have really worked hard. I think, you know, I, I found out in the summertime when we took the Bahamas trip that um, this group could be really good if we stayed together. Obviously, it takes a lot of chemistry and guys believing in one another, but I'm happy. You know, you, you're right. You know, I, I told our guys I'm, I'm happy for them and where they're at, but we just we lock into the next game. The DJ gets his fourth foul. They're making a little bit of a push at you. That was a kind of a key juncture, it seemed like, at the game. You had, like, three on pass out of three, and guys like everybody seemed to chip in. Yeah, you know, we started driving the ball. We settled. I mean, that was our game plan. You know, they, they, I give them credit. They typically switch one through five. Uh, we, we were scoring and driving their five men, and then they obviously start stringing and hedging ball screens and doing different stuff with it. And so we had to make an adjustment. But I thought doing that stretch, LJ made a play, Breon makes a play, uh, T start driving the basketball and stop, you know, trying to, you know, one of the things I told him is stop driving, looking for fouls, go to score. If you get a foul, then that'll be okay.
Well, with Jack Clark warming up and dressing out, was the plan to get him some minutes tonight, or? No. I don't know. He might, he might not even play the March. Gotcha. You believe that? If you say so, okay. Thank you, man. I believe that. No, he, listen, Jack is getting better. Um, I wasn't comfortable today. I didn't think he was quite ready uh, to play. Um, that doesn't mean I don't want you guys to report that he's playing on Saturday because I don't know. You know, he's got the growing and, it, you know, I, he has had a couple of days of practice, um, but he's not ready to play in the game on both ends the way we play. Coach, you kind of talked about fixing some things last year. Um, this year, you know, your team leads the ACC in fewest turnovers. Is that one of the things you guys kind of honed in on over the offseason? Well, I think I think what's happening, and it's weird because I somebody else asked me the same question. You know, we typically have the ball in our three best passers' hands. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to say Jaquel, I'm going to say um, T, but also DJ Burns. <clears throat> so those guys really handle the ball more than anybody, and they really have taken care of the basketball for us. And it's really good. When, like, when you don't turn the ball over, that's a really good thing for your team, you know, when you don't have a bunch of turnovers. And I'm, pr I'm proud of where we're at with it. How encouraging are, is it for you to have so many, what you would say maybe go-to guys, if Burns 32 the other night, Smith 32 tonight, it seems like wherever it's almost like they're dictating who you use as the offense. Yeah, it's good. You know, what I was impressed, impressed about tonight was when you look at it is, you know, yes, T had the hot hand similar to DJ at, um, at Wake Forest. But, you know, DJ with 15 and Jock Hill with 14. Casey throws in 10. LJ comes off and gives seven. And so we're, we're a really good team when everybody's contributing. And when it's spread out through everybody, and you know, I, it's it's good. You know, you know, Jock Hill's had a game. I think Craig maybe with 30, and now DJ and both um, uh, T have had 32. So, man, hopefully somebody else will have 30 again, and we win. Now, I don't like 30 and you lose. I like 30 and always winning. Okay, enjoy your night, guys. Thanks for staying up. Leonard Hamilton is going to be in here in a minute.